from walking between classes to flying south during the winter, both humans and animals are always on the go. Tracking animal migration, however, is a difficult task. Kira Delmore, a PhD student from the University of British Columbia, used cutting-edge technology called light-level geolocators to track a local songbird called the Swainson's thrush for a full year. So a geolocator is about one gram, and it's really small, like the size of your nail almost, and it has a light stock on the end. Um, and the idea is that this light stock is recording light, light intensity at specific time intervals. So some of them record light intensity every five minutes, for instance. So throughout the day, it's recording this light intensity data. Basically, geolocators are just using information on light intensity to give us daily estimates of location. But before Kira could track the Swainson thrush, she had to catch one. Mist nets are the primary tool used by researchers to catch songbirds. In mist netting, what we do is we put the song of the bird that we're targeting, so often the Swainson thrush in our case, so we put the song on. And it's during the breeding season, so the male is territorial, and so he gets angry that there's another bird in his territory. And so he starts doing a lot of like swooping um, actions towards the song. The, the idea is that he hits the net, and then he falls into this pocket here, and then you can easily take the bird out of the net. Now that the net and music are set up, it's a waiting game. Although this bird was lucky enough to get away, this bird wasn't as lucky. After researchers catch a bird, they can attach the geolocator. So it's just hiked up around the bird's thighs here on either side, and then uh, we tighten it so that it's about three to five millimeters from the back of the bird, and then we tie the knots on either end. The attached geolocators weigh less than 4% of the weight of the bird, and therefore have minimal impact. Um, and then we glue it and we would snip this. Using this technology, Kira was able to document a special type of migration called loop migration. What we actually found was that some of the birds, a lot of the inland birds, were doing what we call loop migration. So on fall migration, they were going over the Gulf of Mexico, but on spring migration, they were going around, so through Central America and through Mexico. Um, and this had never been documented directly in any other species. They're telling us that things aren't as simple as we might have thought. And so if we want to, for instance, establish conservation strategies for these birds, we have to know that they're not actually staying the same spot on the wintering grounds. They're not actually following the same routes on fall and spring migration. So we need to keep these things in mind when we're establishing conservation strategies for these guys. If you're able to conserve songbirds, then hopefully you can conserve the other species that occur in the same habitats but maybe aren't recognizable as recognizable as the songbirds.